Okay, our public comment announcement in summary. Of course, we are still under Governor Newsom's order that um, relaxed parts of the Brown Act, which allows us to uh, use Zoom to present this meeting. And uh, that, of course, is available on YouTube, on the college's YouTube channel. The meeting is being recorded and, of course, is available as a public record upon request. Anyone wishing to participate in the public comments section was asked to submit comments electronically by emailing Ms. McClure no later than 30 minutes prior to the meeting. Seems like that word got out because I have quite a few to go through this evening. We'll be reading those into the public record. So let's move on to item number eight, Pledge of Allegiance. Okay. Everybody will put your hand over your heart, face the flag, and begin with me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, item nine, agenda approval. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Advice? Approve. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Agenda is approved. Uh, item 10.1, open forum on non-agenda items. Uh, in the interest of efficiency, we have comments on several subjects, including the reorganization, which is item 11, which is a presentation, not a legislative item. Um, however, with that said, the uh, uh, comments sometimes include more than one subject, so I am going to include them all in 10.1 for open forum items, and then we'll move into item 11 uh, once those are done. So uh, bear with me. Um, I, will, I will group comments when I can. Otherwise, I will simply read them as they were submitted. I will start with several comments that incorporated the same language. So I will indicate everyone who submitted those comments, but I won't read the same comment over and over again, just in the interest of time and efficiency. So uh, Heidi, Will Heidi Williams submitted, uh, I am concerned that the proposed administrative reorganization may overlook the importance of equity policies for employment at a public institution. This in no way reflects negatively or personally against the employees chosen for promotion. Each one is highly skilled and valued to our campus community. However, in solidarity with CMS and classified personnel, the current process robs opportunities from other employees who may have wanted to apply. I do not support this reorganization and would like to see policies that reflect equity and fairness. That same Comment, verifying word for word, was also submitted by Lisa Carlstein. Same comment submitted by Jeffrey Ahmad. Same comment submitted by Karina Giorgi, but she added, racism is tacitly learned, but the ways in which we critically deconstruct racism or speak about racism is not tacitly learned. Training and education is absolutely needed at ABC Campus Wide. We all work at Antelope Valley College via taxpayer monies. We're here to support our community, and my hope is that all of my students, who are 70% students of color, will find their voice and they will replace us. We should not train our students to survive the Antelope Valley. We should train them to thrive in the Antelope Valley. And those of us invested in this mission will do the hard work of training and re-educating ourselves. In the words of Dolores Huerta, si se puede. The original comment was also submitted by Alberto Mendoza, who added, in addition, such statements are made by understanding the struggles of my colleagues, as well as always trying to follow the moral guidance of Father Harry J. Gensler and his version of the golden rule, treat others only as you consent to be treated in the same situation. This added to um, asking for policies that reflect equity and fairness. Uh, the same statement about the reorganization was also submitted by Christine Oliveira and was also submitted by Dr. Mark McGovern. Um, 
Dr. McGovern also added regarding instruction in the fall. I am greatly dismayed at the decision that some classes will be allowed back on campus in the fall in some capacity. The current pandemic is worse now than it has ever been. Quarantine measures throughout the U.S. were relaxed and we have now seen a massive resurgence of the virus. Now the college is trying to do the same. For the safety and well-being of all faculty, staff, students, and their loved ones, we should not be allowed any instruction on campus until there is solid data from the state and various health organizations indicating that it would be safe to do so. Uh, another comment uh, submitted concerning the reorganization identical to the first uh, submitted by May Sancolas. Uh, again, the same comment also submitted by Suzanne Olson, and she adds, I do not support this reorganization. Uh, submitted by Desiree Lee. My name is Desiree Lee, and I'm a constituent of the Classified Bargaining Unit. Um, and I am concerned that the proposed administrative reorganization overlooks the importance of equity policies for employment at a public institution. I'm sorry, this is the same statement. Um, she also adds, I do not support this administrative reorganization due to the following reasons. The correct processes are not being followed. The proposed reorganization does not provide equity for classified positions. The decision sets a negative precedent that the current administration does not care about equity and diversity within the reorganization. I would like to see our current administration adhere to the policies already in place that reflect equity and fairness. I do not support the reorganization. Hal Huntsman submits, the COVID-19 pandemic and its economic fallout has hit communities of color harder than others in our country and our community. Since over 80% of the college's students are students of color, our students are among those hardest hit by the pandemic and its effects. Yet our college has deprioritized those communities and students by not allowing staff in student services, including the student equity and student life programs, to work during the pandemic. I understand the safety of our staff is of the utmost importance, but other campus staff are working and making extra pay, while the staff designated to support our most vulnerable students are not. In addition, our college has not made an institutional statement about the deaths of George Floyd, Robert Fuller, or any other person killed as a result of the other pandemic raging in our country, racism. Our college has not spoken out in solidarity with the international protest against racism and racist killings across the country. This silence tells most of our students that we don't care about them and the destruction of their communities. It is not hard to draw a connection between the college's silence and the deprioritization of students of color and the small number of administrators of color at our college. The current plan to promote several new administrators who are all white and without due process highlights the issue. I asked the board to live up to its commitment to diversity adopted on June 8th, 2020. Three concrete ways the board can live up to its commitment are, stop the proposed reorganization, insist on a fair, open, and rigorous hiring process, prioritize the hiring of administrators of color, ensure that staff and student services, including the student equity and student life programs are allowed to work and paid appropriately like their colleagues in other areas of the college, make a statement in support of racial justice and post it on the front page of our college website. Thank you for your time and consideration. <clears throat> Rosa Fuller submits, I am a faculty member and chair of the Faculty Professional Development Committee. I have two key concerns about the proposed reorganization of the campus. One is that the reorganization proposal was sent to faculty at the start of summer break when many were disengaging from campus. The timing of this important announcement appears to circumvent faculty input. Second, the lack of competitive bidding, even internal bidding for choice positions on campus appears to disregard notions of fairness and equity. As a former commissioner on the Palmdale School District Personnel Commission entrusted to uphold fair employment practices, it is especially troubling to see competitive positions appointed in this manner. This is not a statement on the merits of any single candidate, it's simply a comment on the selection process. I respectfully ask that no changes be implemented until the board has heard the campus concerns from the various constituency groups. Uh, submitted by Carla Corona. I'm a first generation college graduate. I was a student at ABC in the 1990s. I saw no professor that looked like me in music or theater at, these results. at ABC. During those formative years, I wished I had a role model to look up to. I told my younger self back then that one day I would come back and teach at ABC. Well, here I am now in what feels like a full circle. I've been a proud adjunct faculty at ABC for seven years. For me now, I can only hope I've become a role model to my students, especially my students of color, with my passion and dedication to teaching theater arts. Representation matters. 
representation matters, especially in the arts. Due to the shifts with COVID-19, adjuncts need to also be considered in equity and representation as classes get canceled or shifted to the predominantly white, non-Hispanic full-time instructors at ABC. I don't want to be erased from this campus community. With that said, I'm concerned the proposed administrative reorganization may overlook the importance of equity policies for employment at a public institution. Solidarity with CMS and classified personnel. Current process robs opportunities from other employees who may have wanted to apply. I do not support the reorganization and would like to see policies that reflect equity and fairness. From Tina McDermott, I am deeply concerned about the administration reorganization. I found this on the web. I want to be very clear that the nine people chosen for the promotions are highly qualified and valued as part of the ABC family without any reservations. They are all deserving of these positions. The problem is that so are other people and these positions were filled without the benefit of a competitive process that assures equity and employment, something that ABC has publicly stated its commitment to in numerous state and federal documents. We are required to demonstrate equity and employment and unfortunately this reorganization as planned does not appear to do that. As a former accreditation coordinator, I'd like to point out that our response at the 2016 accreditation self-study to standard 3A11, page 236, states, among other things, the college continues to maintain the hiring procedures and practices of ensuring fairness and employment procedures exist. The EEO advisory committee met in the spring of 2016 to finalize the three-year EEO plan, which was submitted to the Board of Trustees for approval on May 9th, 2016. In reference to the EEO plan adopted May 9th, 2016, particularly section 12, page 24, it is the policy of the district to aggressively pursue a program of verifiable recruitment that is inclusive and open to all individuals. Efforts will be undertaken on a regular basis to develop and contact new recruitment sources that ensure diverse pools of candidates. Diverse pools should include, but not be limited to, men, women, persons with disabilities, and individuals from all ethnic and other groups protected from discrimination. I fear that in regards to equity and employment practices, without a competitive, fair, and equitable process in place, ABC has not lived up to its words and ideals. Thank you for your consideration and for your work on the ABC Board of Trustees. From Alonzo Braggs, I am a social justice activist. I'm emailing you to inform you of my concern regarding the recently proposed reorganization of Antelope Valley College. The proposed plan does not reflect the diversity of the student body nor the diversity of the greater Antelope Valley community. The appointment of all white individuals to key positions on campus without a fair, equitable, and competitive hiring process is intolerable. Misappropriation of the over $162 million in public funds the campus receives and dereliction of duty and must be stopped. Our students deserve representation. This move is insensitive and tone deaf to the climate of our country and also to the recent incidents in our community. We demand that the Antelope Valley College Board of Trustees and President Superintendent immediately stop the reorganization and create a fair and equitable hiring process, including recruitment efforts to a diverse population of qualified candidates. Um, we demand that the campus provide a public statement regarding its response to the community concerns and its planned actions to address those concerns, as well as hold a special board meeting that allows constituents to express their concerns. From Tino Garcia, um, I'm a faculty member concerned about the proposed administrative reorganization. It does not seem mindful of equity policies for employment at a public institution like ours. The employees chosen for promotion are not the issue as they are highly skilled and valuable to our campus community. I apologize. This is verbatim the original statement. So thank you for that submission. Uh, from Cindy Hendricks, I wish to express my concerns regarding the proposed reorganization of the ABC administration team. First, whether it was intentional or not, it feels like the reorganization is trying to be rushed through in an underhanded manner. The agreed upon process was not followed in part due to the stay at home orders issued in March. However, rather than try to push these changes through, it seems prudent to wait until the entire community is able to give input and the correct procedures can be followed. Second, the reorganization ignores equity issues, which are now more important than ever. This is not to take away from the qualifications of the appointees, rather it is the fact that others did not have the chance to apply. Finally, despite the claim this reorganization will save money, the accounting seems dubious at the very least. With budget cuts likely coming, ABC should be cautious with regard to the budget and future expenditures. From Stacy Adams, 
I do not support the reorganization. The numbers presented are deceiving. Administrative salaries would be going up, not down. If you disagree, then explain which positions have been eliminated that will result in cost savings. In a time when administration claims there is extreme pressure on the budget and has been stingy with cost of living increases and raises for faculty, uh, but not for administration, the idea of adding more administrative salaries is inappropriate. Furthermore, I'm concerned that the proposed administrative reorganization may overlook the importance of equity policies for employment at a public institution. This in no way reflects negatively or personally against the employees chosen for promotion in solidarity with CMS and classified personnel. The current process robs opportunities from other employees who may have wanted to apply. I do not support this reorganization. would like to see policies that reflect equity and fairness. John Toth submits, in 2001, I was hired as an English instructor at ABC, and during my 19 years of teaching at this college, I have been proud to be part of this campus. I'm proud of the innovative and inclusive teaching strategies of my colleagues that engage and inspire our students. I'm proud of the dedication of my colleagues who often spend countless hours meeting with students and evaluating their work to promote their success. I'm proud of programs like the Hearts and Hands Food Pantry and the Marauder Student Market, which provide food for the food insecure. I'm proud of the IT department's response during the outbreak of the pandemic to swiftly identify and address the technology needs of our students by providing laptops and internet access to enable remote learning. I'm proud of student equity, which offers a variety of culturally enriching opportunities to both students and the campus community. They've brought renowned authors such as uh, Gerald Wing Sue, Tim Wise, and Dr. Joy DeGroy to the college to speak on issues of equity and diversity. I'm also proud of the ways in which student equity promotes student achievement by assisting in meeting the transportation and childcare needs of our diverse student population. In addition, Hope's Help provides students with the text necessary to excel in their classes. There is much to be proud of on this campus, yet I am dismayed and embarrassed by the proposed administrative reorganization. On a campus that has taken many steps to promote equity and provide an opportunity for all, regardless of their circumstances, the current process denies access to these positions to others who may have wanted to apply. I do not support the reorganization, would like to see policies that better reflect the spirit of equity and fairness found in other areas of this college. Thank you for your consideration and your work on the AD Board of Trustees. From Glenn Haller, I have significant trepidation and consternation with the reorganization as currently proposed, specifically with the movement of the kinesiology and athletics department out from under oversight of the VP of academic affairs and a regular dean. At best, athletics could be considered for this. Speaking with my background and knowledge derived from five years as department chair, kinesiology, which includes the yoga trainer certificate program and the health, education, and recreation areas of studies, should not be grouped into a full division with only athletics, especially one that's not overseen by the VP of Academic Affairs. I'm also bothered that a CMS employee is allowed to make the instantaneous move to dean or executive director, which I've been informed specifically has all the duties and abilities with regard to academics and are therefore synonymous and not have to go through the hiring procedures normally reserved for hiring a dean as outlined in AP 7120. Hence, there will be no search, job description, minimum qualification, determination, et cetera. Finally, again, speaking as department chair, I was never consulted about this very important facet of the reorganization and learned about it when it was sent out for the entire campus. This means the department was not able to discuss and submit its opinions before the move forward, which is a violation of AP 3500. Jamie Jones submits the same submission that we started these comments with concerning the proposed a reorganization and that statement closes, of course, with I do not support this reorganization. Michael Pessis also submits the, no, I'm sorry, it's not the same statement. I'm asking the board to stop the promos proposed administrative reorganization and instead fill the positions using open hiring practices that will allow for outside applications. Our institution can only grow from the inclusion of new voices in these important positions. Further, in light of large community resistance to this reorganization, as well as moments in American history in which the nation is grappling with racial injustices, for ABC not to work toward diversifying our administrative positions is to place our institution on the wrong side of history. If the reorganization will not actually save money, as many have pointed out, I can see no reason for the college to continue with such a potentially harmful move. We owe it to the community of the Antelope Valley to work toward actual community representation at ABC. Hold the catalyst submits. I would like to share my concern about the proposed administrative reorganization. 
in 2017 as part of the California Community College System Chancellor Office's vision for success, the Chancellor set the goal to close all gaps in equity on California Community College campuses within 10 years. This is an ambitious goal, a goal that can only be achieved by equally ambitious campuses. Now more than ever, we need to prioritize methods which align with and support our goal. My concern is not with the president's decision for the reorganization, nor is it necessarily with the newly organized structure. My concern stems from the decision's potential incongruence with the efforts to close gaps in equity. I am currently a doctoral student in an educational leadership and policy studies program. I also was one of the lucky and proud faculty to be selected to be part of ABC's first leadership academy. The most salient truth that I took from these programs was that in times of decision, rarely are things black or white. Instead, there are a myriad of factors, influences, and considerations that have to be made when making a decision. My concern today is that this reorganization proposal failed to consider how this course of action may potentially inhibit the work done to meet the Chancellor's goal of closing gaps in equity. As an EEO representative, as a faculty member, and as a member of the community, I'm concerned that the proposed administrative reorganization may overlook the importance of equity policies for employment at a public institution. To be clear, I'm not saying that the reorganizing our campus structure inhibits equity, nor am I saying that folks chosen in the reorganization are not qualified or they're not great at what they do. I am saying that the chosen method doesn't benefit from a campus vetted interview and selection process. The chosen method doesn't benefit from equal employment opportunities. The concept of context of the time is also important to consider as well. From a symbolic perspective, now more than ever, our students, our staff, our faculty need to know ABC is serious about closing gaps in equity and by extension is serious about the success and well-being of our students. Thank you for your time. From Pamela Ford. Uh, good evening, board president and board members. I'm the classified union president. I'm here on behalf of all 250 classified employees. The classified CMF and administrative positions proposed in the reorganization should be open to all qualified individuals, allowing for an equitable and diverse process instead of just a select few. However, this is not the case. It appears the president's pension for deliberately ignoring processes have become a tool for him to elevate those he deems worthy thereby bypassing portions of the reorganization, ignoring hiring practices and collective bargaining. For example, the president has not made himself available to meet with the college coordinating council members, and instead his appointed chair blatantly informed the group, the president will not be meeting with you, so you need to move on from that. And the final version of the proposed changes did not go out to the entire campus for discussion or feedback for at least a week. Instead, we received it last Thursday and the board packet sent to you. Hence, you are now in receipt of the revision without campus review. Uh, you as elected board members have the ultimate authority and accountability, yet you've consistently approved his actions even though he ignores and blatantly bypasses policies and procedures, which begs the question, has the board given a directive to the president to no longer uphold equity and diversity and ignore district policies and procedures he may find inconvenient for his purposes? Has he been given a directive to purge diversity from upper management, and has the board neglected to inform the campus of these notions? It's no stretch reaching this conclusion when individuals of color in prominent positions have been eliminated and replaced with non-individuals of color, specifically the executive director of the foundation, the vice president of administrative and business services, the Palmdale site director, and the director of human resources. Racial justice can't be solved by placing brown people of color into positions with or without salary increases or promotion, and then totally excluding black people, which is exactly what has occurred in this reorganization, and basically advancing non-individuals of color to upper administration and executive director positions. I hope no member of the board is assuming anyone, including people of color, want to be handed promotions without going through the process. That would be a wrong assumption and clearly demonstrates you have lost sight of the importance of policies and procedures and significant accreditation of this institution and are lacking true knowledge of equality and diversity. Employees, students, and the community at large expect the board to be knowledgeable of and require equity and diversity of these processes for all qualified individuals who apply and are eligible. The fact that it has to be brought to your attention signifies a huge problem. Therefore, we cannot support this reorganization or requesting the board suspend this action and require the president to follow the process. And we stand in solidarity with A, uh, B, C, F, T, ASO, CMS, and Academic Senate. There appears to be a lack of cultural sensitivity when it comes to diversity and equity on the part of this district, as I was deeply offended when in the President's weekend thoughts of June 14th, he stated, when I first arrived at ABC, my executive assistant was Maxine Griffin, an African-American woman, advanced to director of human resources. Why was it necessary to reference her ethnicity? 
The act of marginalizing and ignoring people of color is not lost on me. Saturday, the faculty union and Senate presidents were contacted by the current executive director of ITS for their input regarding suspending their all email accounts to their constituent groups. Yet as classified president, I was not contacted. Why not? As with any behavior that goes unchecked, this display of marginalizing minorities has now reached our students. I'm referencing the president's replying all to the students, a person of color, personal email. Could this be a lack of understanding of freedom of speech and diversity? Will the board address this inappropriate action? We all should be in support of our students. Unit members have expressed concern about the president's weekend thoughts. Perhaps you might consider that all people in our country did not share nor enjoy all the opportunities he received. For example, my family too has memories of the 50s when my black grandparents moved to the AV but we're not allowed to live beyond Sun Village. And the years before were of humiliation, it did confuse and death. People of color had to endure. Let's keep our eye on the ball toward what is happening today by educating our students and be concerned about the health and safety of everyone. In the words of the preamble to the Declaration of Independence, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are all endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. Among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. There are concerns about your leadership as elected board members. Hence, as an employee, leader, and community member, I will continue to bring these concerns to you, and I hope others will too, until you demonstrate by your actions that you as a board are committed to equality and diversity, and that you will uphold the policies and procedures of this campus, hence keeping us viable by protecting our accreditation. I'm aware of the retaliatory nature of some leadership of this district who support the president, but it's everyone's responsibility, obligation, and right to question our leaders and hold them accountable. Addressing the reorganization from Tamira to, to Palmetto to Spain, the action of appointing individuals to very high level positions at our college is in direct conflict with our established fair hiring practices for competitive employment. Hiring committees should be established for all new positions and candidates invited to apply for competitive employment. ABC is a shared governance campus. This means that faculty classified and student body, CMS and administration all have a voice in who we hire to work at ABC. Hiring committees are formed with shared governance in mind. All hiring committees have EEO representation to ensure fair hiring practices. Shared governance is so much a part of the fabric of our college that part of my weekly obligation as a faculty member is to participate in shared governance work. Um, second part of this comment, um, I was shocked to see a student's personal email to our president forwarded to all ABC employees and students. In addition to forwarding the email, our president also publicly rebuked the student for challenging the appropriateness of a, quote, drunken booze story, end quote, in the president's weekly thoughts email. The student had every right to disagree with the appropriateness of the story when it's sent out campus-wide. Again, his response to our president was private. Uh, the thing that makes me most concerned is that the student's email with identifying information was forwarded to the entire campus. It didn't take long for social media to get wind of this and people immediately began to take aim at our student. There appears to be an ABC community Facebook page where people are quite active. Our student was demeaned and publicly ridiculed. He was called a I'll skip that and more on social media. These attacks apparently have grown more dangerous. Other faculty members have informed me the student has received threats and has uh, death threats and has had to contact the police for protection. The student is our responsibility and he is now in potential danger directly due to the actions of our college president. Genuinely concerned this uh, for the student and believe our college must take whatever action is necessary to ensure the student's health and welfare. This includes mental health as social media attacks, uh, bullying are well documented as causes of anxiety, depression, and in some cases, suicide. We need to take this matter seriously and take corrective action immediately. And from Doug Jensen, I'm concerned the proposed administrative reorganization ignores important policies that ensure fair and equitable employment. The current proposal, uh, I'm sorry, this is the same uh, statement that was already submitted. And Mr. Jensen adds, it is also concerning that the process has been manipulated. The superintendent president has made statements regarding the reorganization that are inconsistent with past actions and events. The current administration should take the high road and follow policies already in place that reflect equity and fairness. I don't support the reorganization. From Jalissa Jones, as a student at ABC, I'm concerned the proposed administrative reorganization, uh, I'm sorry, this is the same statement to begin with, uh, I would also like an email exchange from July 2nd to be reviewed and handled to the highest ability of our school community. I feel President Knudsen largely misstepped by publicly addressing a student in a mass shared email and that the apology given was 
lackluster in comparison to the danger posed of publicly releasing students' private information. Uh, Crystal Garcia, as an employee of Antelope Valley College, an Antelope Valley College alum and an Afro-Latina, I believe it is important to be an example to our students and use my voice to address my concerns about the proposed administrative organization. I am an educated Afro-Latina, yet I have been referred to as just the party planner and told that I need to get a big girl job because I have my master's degree, but still my requests for reclassification have been denied more than once. There's no movement to create opportunities to promote and still directly serve the student population. I believe the proposed administrative reorganization overlooks the importance of equity and diversity. Our students and campus community need to be able to look at leadership and see themselves represented as I do. Our campus community needs to see that equity and diversity matter, that Black Lives Matter, and that right now that is not being communicated. I don't support this administrative reorganization due to the following reasons. The correct processes are not being followed. The proposed reorganization does not provide equity for classified positions. The decision sets a negative precedent. The current administration doesn't care about equity and diversity within the organization. From uh, Richie Neal Howe, I'm expressing great concern with the current proposed reorganization and administrative structure. I feel the current process does not represent equitable employment practices and prevents others, especially those from underrepresented groups, from applying to be considered for these professional opportunities. Thank you for your consideration. Uh, from Nancy Masters. I wish to go on record saying I support the leadership of Antelope Valley College. I recognize and respect the president's authority as it relates to reorganization and I stand in support of our current leadership, the board and the president. I recognize your face with a thankless and almost insurmountable job keeping the college efficient and productive during the most uncertain time in our history. Thank you for fulfilling the mission of the college and providing a top-notch education to our students and for putting our community first. Thank you for continuing to act unselfishly with your time to steer and maneuver our college through these uncertain times. Thank you for keeping us employed. I trust that this administration will continue to make the best decisions in keeping our college sound. Consistent leadership is paramount in keeping an organization from crumbling under the pressure. Your track record is steadfast. Finally, Ms. Ford may tout that the classified union stands in solidarity by not supporting the pro proposed reorganization. However, I find this a self-serving and deceiving remark. I would like to point out that more than 50% of staff do not belong to the classified union. I was not asked for my opinion. As a non-union employee, I appreciate your discernment in recognizing the loudest voice doesn't necessarily represent the majority. Uh, to Mr. Knudsen and the board, we are writing this email, I'm sorry, this is submitted by um, Perry Jellica, Cindy Vargas, John Taylor, Justin Webb, Barry Green, John Livermont, Brad Hazard, Russell Gordon, Charles Gordon, Patrick London, all signed to the same statement. We are writing this email in support of the great leadership that is being provided to Antelope Valley College Community College District. The impact and growth of all of our educational facilities has been tremendous and will meet the growing needs of our diverse student populations, educational needs and goals. Dealing with the COVID-19 health pandemic, where the unemployment rate rose higher in three months than it did over two years during the Great Recession, we thank you for supporting all of us financially. Many colleges across the country went into cost containment measures right away with cuts, layoffs, and furloughs. Your financial support has been greatly appreciated. Challenging times still lie ahead and we look forward to following your leadership and helping our school to continue the mission of Antelope Valley College, providing a quality, comprehensive education to a diverse, a diverse population of learners. We're committed to student success, offering value and opportunity and service to our community. Things may not be ideal right now, but we all have a lot to be grateful for. We need to all take time to reflect on those things. Thank you for forging us forward, as we will be st a stronger college and community because of these challenging times. I am just about done with this topic, strangely enough. Thank you for letting me know. Um, let's see. I actually think I am. Um, so that concludes the comments concerning the reorganization. And I, I just want to say that our next agenda item is a presentation concerning the proposed reorganization and also point out uh, that there is no legislative action taken on the organization this evening and the implementation of uh, 
whatever ends up being uh, agreed to in the reorganization will not take place until mid-August. So um, hopefully some of those concerns will be addressed. I'm going to finish this. Um, Let's see. Uh, Melody uh, Klingenfuss, on behalf of the California Dream Network, the Coalition for Humane Immigrants' Rights, College Youth Branch, we stand in solidarity with the Antelope Valley College students and demand full accountability of its president and board for any actions taken that were not in the best interest of the students. These ABC leaders should always make decisions led by the good of the students, but in recent weeks, especially during a global pandemic, they've not made students feel safe and protected. Please let me know any next steps. We stand with you all the way. And from Alexander Schroer, in light of our current circumstances regarding the COVID-19 pandemic and the manner in which safety protocols have been implemented and enforced, I would like to bring to the attention of the board the following. It's with the utmost sincerity that I would in a perfect situation love to return to an in-person instructional model. Even a blended learning environment, in my opinion, would be more beneficial to student, lear to student learning than an entirely remote model, otherwise known as distance learning. That being said, over the last month, I've observed some troubling trends, which at this point have convinced me that the only solution for the time being is unfortunately a fully remote model. To extrapolate, the past few weeks when I went to campus, I observed there was a significant lapse in enforcing the mask policy. I observed several individuals not respecting social distancing, choosing not to wear a face covering. As such, I was not surprised to find out that campus had to reclose in order to conduct yet another deep cleaning due to staff members becoming infected. At this point, it is apparent that there is a disappointing lack of planning and enforcement from the administration of the college, causing staff and faculty to feel there is little that has been done in order to effectively and safely open up for any form of in-person learning. Even during the summer period, with no students on campus and a reduced amount of on-campus staff, we saw that individuals came down with cases. Stands to reason then that with our current plan of action, uh, increasing the population of the campus would be ultimately irresponsible and detrimental to the health of the student body and staff. From Santi Tafarella. Uh, dear board members, do Black Lives Matter? If so, I respectfully ask you to make, as a condition of reopening the campus, the regular coronavirus testing of workers and students throughout the semester. If anyone in a class tests positive, we should have in place quarantine protocols for all of that person's on-campus contacts. It's unconscionable for a professor to send anyone presenting with symptoms in the classroom back into the community untested. Instead, they should be sent to a health office for on-campus screening. So it's important that you tell us as campus leaders whether you explicitly agree that testing needs to be part of any safe and healthy campus reopening. Silence on this matter is abuse of the faculty and students, especially when we ask such questions via email and are ghosted. That is, we receive no reply or even acknowledgement of receipt. Employment law is clear. Employers cannot be careless or reckless with workers' lives. No worker in fall should arrive on our campus feeling they are choosing between risking death and feeding their family. It's not right. And only regular sample testing of the campus population can bring a reasonable level of reassurance that we can all work safely. Students and faculty testing is the recommendation of Dr. Fauci for school reopening. Numerous colleges that are reopening are also planning to mass vaccinate for the flu. Harvard will be testing all students every three days. Others are targeting their semesters to end before Thanksgiving. The University of Miami is headed by a physician formerly at Harvard. His school's protocols include testing as well, as should ours. The superintendents of LA and San Diego schools have made it crystal clear that testing is a condition of reopening for them as well. But President Knudsen, the superintendent of our Antelope Valley College, has not. Herd immunity equals death. Silence equals death. Not testing equals death. If Black Lives Matter, our campus will test. Boston surgeon Atul Gawande advising large institutions like ours regarding opening wrote the following recently in the New Yorker. The lessons learned in Boston hospitals points toward an approach that we might think of as combination therapy, like a drug cocktail. Its elements are familiar. Hygiene measures, screening, distancing, and masks. Each has flaws. Skip one, and the treatment won't work. I submit that the leadership of Antelope Valley College on its current course of dodging the testing component in reopening is setting us up for the careless and reckless endangerment of workers and students in the fall, and I urge a course correction on testing. We need to know when the viruses begin to spread on campus at the front end of an outbreak, not the back end. Vasilio Hernandez. 
I am a political science major and I have quite a bit to say as a critique and complaint toward the president of Antelope Valley College at Canutes and I'd like to point out a personal experience I had with him that clearly demonstrates his inability to understand our educational institution as an institute that serves our community. Before the school shut down in March during a coffee with the president event, I attempted to bring up the fact that a critical Supreme Court decision concerning DACA and our undocumented students on campus was at limbo. For I introduced myself, the president um, after I introduced myself to the president and faculty during the open comment section of the event, once I began to speak of DAPA, Mr. Knudsen took the word from me and failed to listen. He didn't let me speak, not even two sentences, and instead spoke about how wrong I was for attempting to defend a program like DACA. In all honesty, I was overwhelmed with embarrassment that such a person is called the president of ABC. I believe the president of a community college should represent its students and seek to listen to help them through their academic career. I don't believe it's just uh, for such a cold and passive aggressive response to be uttered by a person in that kind of position, especially when the comments are aimed at an entire population of students. I'm shedding light on this issue because it affects our entire student body uh, because it affects some of us. That is what makes us a community. Not just saying we are a community, but feeling like one and acting like one. Uh, the incident at Anlo Valley College made me truly question the power structure functioning in my community college. And I hope that more students, faculty, educators, administrators, and community members all come to realize community college is not a business. It is a community coming together, seeking knowledge, and putting it to practice uh, in order to make our world better for everyone. Lastly, I wish we lived in a society where all people were granted the privilege of time, the time we all need to be able to analyze and begin to understand the world around us, a time for people like us and people like them to be able to see each other's lives and begin to see that there is no such thing as the us and them, that we are all people. Unfortunately, this is still untrue, but for all the people that were unable to have the time for them, I try to speak and be heard. And from Howard Joffe, why was the decision made to keep the AV tennis courts closed? All of the public use courts in Lancaster have been opened. From Sierra Gooden, hello, my name is Sierra Gooden. I'm an alumni of ABC. I'm advocating for many people in this email as well as my Facebook post about Professor Suzanne Compton who goes, uh, well, yeah. two years ago, uh, a music faculty member posted vile comments on a post of mine celebrating the month of Pride in June. Spewed hate-filled comments on my post unprovoked. Um, I'm not going to repeat the comments. Arguing with my friends when they brought actual facts. I did not take place in the conversation, but all the evidence is still on Facebook. Later that year, Suzanne, this individual, verbally assaulted me in front of the choir. Um, I'm not entirely sure that this is appropriate for uh, public comment. So I'll summarize, I'll say that we've also received the Facebook posts and I have asked uh, staff to follow up on this in particular um, to ensure that these issues are addressed. Um, the closing part of this comment, um, avoiding some of these very specific statements. These acts have gone on for too long and for ABC to sit back and allow an instructor to continue to teach speaks volumes. I'm more than ready and willing to advocate not only for myself but many others and I've been asked to do so. I want a better environment for learning for current and future students at ABC. I know that there is a lot to digest in this email and I greatly appreciate you taking the time and again make sure that it's followed up and along the lines of that one uh, as I said, we received copies of the Facebook exchange and another comment from Christina Wan. Susan G. Compton's hate has gone too far. Uh, I thought the music department would be better than this. I would appreciate a response to her current post. So we'll follow up on that. Um, from Chelsea Schwab, as an ABC student, I want to write to and express myself in support of Omar standing up to the president of ABC. Like Omar, I've truly started to dread Sundays because I know we're going to be pinged with an email from ABC's president that he is so arrogant as to think we care about his life. I relocated from my home state to California to create a better life for myself. Um, I have multiple disabilities as well as several serious health issues, all of which I live with every day. Given the uncertainty our world is currently going through, I'm even more concerned with trying to keep myself safe and healthy as I can. So I assure you it's hard enough for me to deal with my own stuff, which I've just reflected about here. 
The last thing I want to hear is the thoughts of someone who is privileged in more ways I can count, who doesn't care about me or the things I'm dealing with as a student in my own personal life. Uh, because every Sunday when I read Mr. Knudsen's emails, I would cry buckets because I don't have a family to care for me or care about myself. My family of origin is incredibly toxic and I don't need nor want such people in my life. While I'm generally positive, it would hurt me to my core to read Mr. Knudsen's emails and what she'd say some meaningless stuff that myself and many other folks couldn't relate to, uh, while not acknowledging some people's lived reality of being families of one having to take care of themselves, not to mention the chronic depression that comes from being an immunocompromised person several times over as I am. Going back to Mr. Knudsen's Sunday emails, time and time again, those emails have clearly shown me uh, what a privileged ABC president is, and so I can't say I'm surprised at his unprofessional and callous reaction when Omar privately stood up to him in a way that Mr. Knudsen found harsh. I want to express my deepest support, solidarity with Omar taking the actions he did. It's important that we are heard as students and just as important that we do what we can to show people in power that we will not take their discounting the words of those of us who don't share their position of authority just because some chain of command somewhere says that the student body doesn't matter. It's important for us as students to unite as one so that we can all express this problematic president for exactly who he is and hopefully in the end get him out of this position which has caused him to be so arrogant and unempathetic toward the people he's supposed to actually care deeply about. I wish there was a way for us as one ABC collective voice to find a new president ourselves who generally wants to hear our concerns, who fully involves us in our education, rather than one who tells us to shut up when we say something they don't like to hear. I'm typically an outspoken person, but honestly, the situation has me feeling so out of sorts lately, it feels hard to find the words that convey exactly how I'm feeling. Lastly, because this can't be said enough, we ABC students are powerful, even though Mr. Knudsen, the one who's currently in charge, tries to make us feel like we're small and powerless. I'm an ABC student and I proudly and unashamedly stand alongside my fellow students who feel it's our right and duty to speak out about injustices like this one that Mr. Knudsen has unnecessarily and disrespectfully made public when it should have been kept private. Silence is dangerous, so I'm publicly letting the board and others know the truth, my truth, because I'm a valuable human being who will be heard. From Tina Stanford, uh, I believe the president was in highly inappropriate in response to the student by public, publicly sending the email to all um, ABC email addresses, which resulted in a member sending it on Facebook and the other social media platforms, which resulted in the student getting sent hurtful messages. The president's response was then to write a short message that he didn't mean for this to happen. I personally, along with others, saw the message on a social media platform, believe that Mr. Knudsen should not have sent the email to everyone in the first place, as there was no point. He could have instead personally messaged Omar. We believe the response was simply not necessary and something simply needs to be done as a sincere apology for putting that student in an uncomfortable place. Thank you for your time. Uh, Cindy Hendricks. I'd like to express how embarrassed and appalled I am by the president's public response to a student's private email. President Kingston's over-the-top and inappropriate reply sent to all faculty and students reflects poorly on the institution. To begin with, the fact that the president sent his reply, which included the student's email address, to the entire school is unprofessional at best and certainly is questionable with large privacy laws meant to protect students. While the student could have admittedly used a more formal register and respectful tone, our job as educators is to educate, not humiliate. The fact that the student took the time to compose a response to the president demonstrates his willingness to be an active participant in the ABC community. This should be encouraged and nurtured, not denigrated. Additionally, given the current state of the nation, replying in such a caustic manner is irresponsible, inflammatory, only contributes to feelings of discomfort and malcontent on campus and in the community. We should be trying, um, I'm sorry, we should be trying to create a culture of inclusiveness and collaboration at ABC. The president's response did the opposite. As a faculty member, I feel I need to protect and nurture our students. I certainly hope the board feels the same. Uh, from Stacy Adams, I'm greatly disturbed by President Knudsen's email response to student Omar Ulad on July 2nd. Omar is not alone in feeling that Mr. Knudsen's weekend's thoughts are uh, emails are a misuse of school email. When the president sends an email to all, it's presumed to contain important information and should be read right away. The emails are habitually sent that contain unimportant information, but in the future, recipients will not pay attention to emails from the president and it detracts from the importance of future communications. Furthermore, what is most disturbing is that Omar emailed Mr. Knudsen directly um, and expressed his feelings, and then Mr. Knudsen replied back to all, I mean the entire campus community, all faculty, all employees, all administrators, all students. 
along with communication manner may have been overly casual, lacking formality and respect. His message and his opinion shouldn't be lost, and he certainly doesn't deserve public shaming for having the courage to share his opinion. Omar doesn't have to be a veteran to have an opinion on this. Many people, including myself, have grown weary of the misuse of email by the president. I cannot even imagine the response of administration had an instructor receive an email from a student and then chose to reply all, the entire campus community. It seems unfathomable and would be considered an enormous lapse in judgment. I'm sure the word unprofessional would be used. Should not the same standard be applied to the college president? This seems to be a serious lapse in judgment to try to publicly humiliate the student. Refer to AP 3050, Institutional Code of Ethics, and AP 3720, uh, Network Telecommunications Use from Esperanza or Montez. Uh, I'd like to say that any person in a high position like Mr. Knudsen should never put into question if one has served the country or not. As president of ABC, he put his own leadership skills in jeopardy when he took the course of action he did. Therefore, he should respectfully step down as president of ABC. There were so many positive alternatives that Mr. Knudsen could have taken to handle the email he received. As a pillar of the community, Mr. Knudsen, he didn't just affect one person, he affected so many more people. The Board of ABC and California Department of Education should have zero tolerance for Mr. Knudsen's lack of professionalism and the outrage it caused. More importantly, Mr. Knudsen put the life of his, one of his own students in harm's way. From Andrea Ochoa, thank you for your time in reading this comment. I'm a student here going into school with a new calendar that will place me and others at a disadvantage for graduating on time. Calendar widely opposed for its unfairness to us and to faculty. I'm a student whose major is overlooked in spite of our program being the third best in the state after UCR and CSUN. Deaf studies and interpreting owes its greatness not to the board, but to the professors in the deaf community, ignoring its request for support in additional classes. Um, I'm a Latinx student, one who supports fellow minorities in a school whose board disagrees with the reasons for the Black Lives Matter protests, according to Mr. Knudsen's June 1st email, the first of its kind to address this matter. The thing is, I and many of my peers and faculty feel ignored, discriminated against by this board. We're a diverse population and the board should reflect that. Recently, the theater arts department wrote a statement concerning racial injustice, a statement that made me feel like we are seen as students. The board rejected the statement simply because it disagrees. Minority students, especially those in the community, have been facing fear, discrimination, and blatant racism for far longer than many allies have been aware. They deserve to feel welcome and safe on campus. Increasing police activity and disregarding these real and pertinent issues have not contributed to that. While some have tolerance for the weekend thoughts, many are left to wonder where, this, where the support for student lives lies. Addressing the SpaceX launch uh, the week of George Floyd's murder at the hand of our officers who are part of an unjust system was disrespectful to say the least, but not surprising. Omar was faced with death threats for making his opinion known only after Mr. Knudsen made it public to the entire student body. Have you served and are you a veteran demonstrated nothing except the use of the ad hominem fallacy and the lack of professionalism. I could go on about how belittled and ignore the students and faculty who do not share your views feel. Tolerating the racist and homophobic online remarks of such people as um, Suzanne while putting aside comments and statements that uplift and encourage us shows exactly where your support lies. If you take nothing else from this comment, please take this. We'll all be asked how we acted during these drastically changing times. Will you be able to say uh, that you are on the right side of history or will you refuse change and continue to favor those who look and think just like you? From J.C. Priest, good evening. I'm a student who's grown increasingly concerned over the conduct and decisions of leadership at Antelope Valley College and would like to provide what input I can into future endeavors. I lately have found the attitude of school leadership somewhat dismissive to student concerns surrounding the various impracticalities and inequities of remote learning for students with learning disabilities, as well as the school's somewhat lukewarm response to racism and police brutality. I could be mistaken in this regard, but I fear these concerns going largely unaddressed by school leadership set a dangerous precedent. However, I appreciate the measured response of school leadership in matters of closing and reopening, and I'm incredibly grateful to the school for offering in-person learning opportunities this fall. I cannot overstate how much uh, this step toward normality means to me. Um, as a matter of policy, we are unable to read electronic comments um, that request anonymity. Um, were this a public meeting where people were present, uh, that you wouldn't have to state your name, you would walk forward as a distinct person that we could see and hear speak. Unfortunately, that doesn't apply to electronic comments. So I won't be reading aloud comments made anonymously. Um, I 
I'm going to pause for a minute. Um, normally, it is not our practice to respond to public comments, agendized or non-agendized. But I do feel compelled to say a couple of things. Um, first and foremost, um, it is the staff's intention to follow up with concerned individuals about several of these issues. In particular, the issue concerning the email with the student. Um, we have asked staff to look at policy, to look at procedure, and in addition to follow up specifically uh, on what transpired and to ensure that uh, everybody is safe and uh, careful and their concerns addressed. So I anticipate that moving forward. Um, comments about reopening and the concerns about health and well-being are uh, also continue will continue to be addressed by staff it's a fluid situation and so we will continue to provide updates as things change it's hard to see what it's going to look like even three or four weeks from now uh, as i said we'll address the reorganization when we get to the presentation here in just a little bit. And I'll keep going. Uh, let's see. From Desiree Lee, as an employee of Antelope Valley College and a recent graduate of President Knudsen's inaugural Leadership Academy, we were taught at ABC, we respond, not react. Based on the email sent to the entire campus, including the Board of Trustees and subsequently the community, Mr. Knudsen's reply was a horrible reaction. This reaction was unwarranted based on the student's initial private email. While we can appreciate the President's trying to relate by reminiscing on his military past, the story the student commented on was a, quote, drunk and booze story. The type of story didn't resonate with many of us, and I, too, thought this would have been better served in a blog of some sort. There's a time and a place for everything. This forum just wasn't the appropriate medium. There are more pressing issues we need to discuss via campus email besides a stroll down memory lane. It brings to mind the issue of censorship that we were recently subjected to with the removal of employees' ability to send emails via all classified all faculty. President, the board's lack of response regarding racism, discrimination, and other injustices that constituents of color are facing on a daily basis is extremely telling and disheartening. Are you aware that 76% of the campus uh, body has varied ethnicities and are considered the majority organization? We do not see ourselves represented in the leadership and the board of trustees. Your faculty and staff have sent requests for a response regarding the injustices outlined and have yet to receive a response. Your constituents are pleading for their voices to be heard. When can we expect a response or statement denouncing racism and discrimination from our president and the board of trustees? Um, Regarding the proposed reorganization, the equitable policies and procedures have been completely disregarded by this administration. This is again both disheartening and concerning. It's disheartening for employees because it discourages internal candidates from attaining credentials. There are scarce opportunities for upward mobility and reclassifications have not been approved. Additionally, it's concerning as the cherry picking of certain employees to be promoted or relocated sets negative precedents and a possible resentment or retaliation for those chosen employees. It's a slippery slope and no one wins if our leadership decides to continue forward. Consider your employees feel disrespected, unappreciated, and disregarded by the administration's issues, living within a pandemic, racial disparities and discrimination, and a heightened political climate to name a few. Uh, yet there is still an expectation of excellence and high performance as we are a service-based industry. That being said, our students are our customers. With all that your employees are experiencing, we are truly providing students with the quality comprehensive education that our college mission states. Based on the low graduation rates for our students of color, um, Hispanic at 28% and African American students at 12% as compared to the 36% rate of their white counterparts, we can do better. We can no longer stand by and allow the leadership of this institution to ignore the elephant in the room. We need to rise to the occasion during these uncertain and trying times. How do you want your legacy to be remembered as the president and board of this great institution? You must do better and it starts at the top. Michelle Hightower is the director of student equity at ABC, came to the college five years ago, and it has been an amazing journey of service, service to students and to my community. When I applied for the job of director of student equity, I didn't know many people on campus. I knew no one from the administration. I interviewed for the position and believe I did exceptionally well as I am now the incumbent. I later heard I was a potential candidate pool upset because there was someone they believed was the best candidate for the job prior to interviewing me. No one had ever heard of me as the work I had done for equity in law enforcement and local government. My skill set being brought to the table didn't mean the other candidate wasn't great. However, it allowed the campus to glean from everything that I had been prepared to do. How many other candidates are like me 
in and outside of the Yellow Valley. At the time of my hiring, I lived in the Valley over 15 years and had been searching for opportunities to give back to my community instead of taking my skill set out of the Yellow Valley. Since coming to ABC, I, in collaboration with individuals across campus and my staff, have successfully created 17 uh, programs that serve students and work to close equity gaps. In recent days, I've often wondered how would ABC the student equity programs and other programs we partner with and support be different if an appointment had been made to fill my position instead of a fair and competitive hiring process. I'm an educated, highly qualified black woman that was looking for the opportunity to serve and brought energy to our new program and a plan to serve the campus. Student equity is doing things that are raising the bar for equity work across the state of California. I believe we can do more. It is my firm belief we have not yet seen the the best that we can be, and I'm requesting that Antelope Valley College implement in spirit and action its resolution made on June 8, 2020, declaring our commitment to diversity. One way I see this happening is by reinstating the EEO committee, which I served on, and granting that committee authority to make strategic changes in hiring practices, uh, seek diversity in hiring collaborative funding through collaborative funding sources on campus that are committed to equity and diversity. These funds would be used to recruit diverse candidates through channels proven to assemble a qualified applicant pool, as well as engage the campus community in the recruitment process to reconsider hiring practices that would bar candidates like myself from even participating in being hired in the process. Closing, I challenge the board, our administration, staff, faculty, and students at Antelope Valley College to accept the call to action. It takes all of us speaking out against systemic issues that create equity gaps and further harm us as a whole. I often tell individuals on our campus that equity does not just live in SSV 187, must live in every space on this campus and live in each of our hearts, minds, and most importantly, actions. I ask each of you to take the action to demand equity and justice in what matters most. I don't know Valley College. From May Santa Colas, uh, in terms of President Knuthan's email response to the student, if we are to maintain professionalism and the respect of our community, we can't have our leadership berating our students. We certainly cannot and should not violate FERPA and potentially endanger them either. Uh, the student shared uh, an opinion of his regarding the email that President Newsom had been sending over the course of the last couple of months. His opinion was invalidated by the president's response or if he'd ever been in the military. And that has nothing to do with this comment, just as the president's email had nothing to do with how we're approaching life in quarantine and life in the midst of heightened racial tension. Additionally, I will share that I've been deeply unsettled with the perceived lack of concern for our campus community. A young man was found hanged in our college's own backyard and we've all heard from the administration was crickets or nothing. There are a plethora of colleges down below in LA providing remote classes where students can feel safe, supported, and receive their education. This lack of empathy for our students continues, we'll lose them. We know there are faculty and staff that care deeply for our students' well-being and have shown it through their work. But it's clear our administrators are not necessarily on board with that. If they are, their silence doesn't show it. Black lives matter, black students matter, black faculty matters, black staff matters. Oscar Sanchez, I'm emailing you about an urgent issue about new types of courses. These are uh, the blended hybrid and face-to-face -face courses revealed to the ABC students earlier today. As a student, I'm angry about these changes which risk the lives of students, faculty, and families of the aforementioned groups. Risking harm for the chance uh, to provide slightly better instruction is a reckless and foolish idea to have. To think our lives are to be gambled is to believe we are worthless worth less than the desire to return to normalcy, and I won't tolerate it. The personal issue with this due to the fact that one of my distance instruction classes ends 10 minutes before my newly appointed blended class, which was just re recently changed to such. The drive to ABC for me is between 30 and 40 minutes, so how would I both be able to attend my online course and not be late every day for the blended course? It can't be chalked up to a mistake in my scheduling because these class changes were presented after the fact. I can't change classes either due to this information being presented so late. Um, I'm not the only person by a long shot to have issues with this. As the ASO Senator of the Palmdale Campus and Extended Learning, I implore those receiving my message not to go through with these changes. Classes will also be implemented in the Palmdale Campus, and I'm especially against this being in the Palmdale Campus due to the environment being so small and close together. Even with classes being halved on different days, it won't prevent the spread of COVID-19 as much as the administration desires. I don't want to risk students' health, especially in my city. From Jessica Fragoso, as an ABC student employee, I found the recent developments with leadership concerning. 
more than ever, transparency and efforts toward equity matter to the student body. We need to be confident our concerns and voices are represented by the leadership on campus. When I received the president's email recently, I was shocked. I can't believe that our president would put a student on display to scold them in front of thousands of people. This action was uh, an abuse of power. There's also an issue of a lack of transparency and communication regarding new leadership for the colleges. For the college, the biases and injustices that have been occurring for hundreds of years are coming forward to our nation's consciousness. Uh, we will take our higher, higher education elsewhere if ABC doesn't show us that they're here to serve the community and represent us fairly and openly. Uh, Jason Bowen, I'd like to thank President Ed Knutson for his weekly missives, which I find quite enjoyable. They provide for me an inspiring glimpse of humanity at a time when I've never felt so detached and isolated. However, not all share my sentiments. Uh, on July 2nd, a student contacted Mr. Knudsen privately and shared, in my opinion, quite harsh criticisms. This was, to my understanding, a private communication to President Knudsen. In his reply that same day, President Knudsen made public the entire contents of the student email, including the student's name. That was, in my opinion, a severe breach of trust and a violation of our own ideals as an institution of higher learning. Antelope Valley College affirms the right of the individual and respects human dignity. Programs and activities of the college foster the individual's ability to think clearly, critically, and independently to meet the demands of an increasingly complex society. The student is the primary concern of the college. The curriculum activities services of the college help students understand their physical, cultural, ethnic, and social environment. The preservation of academic freedom provides a college environment in which students and faculty can examine ideas freely. Um, Oscar Sanchez. I think I wrote this. It looks familiar. Uh, emailing about an urgent issue about new types of courses. These are the blended hybrid and face to face courses. Um, that's yeah, one. that's the same yeah. one. Exactly. Um, Aurora Bird. Uh, we grieve for the loss of ABC professor of French and German, Dr. Um, Lyatt Bowler, who passed away on Saturday, July 4th. Dr. Bowler was a valued member of the ABC community, including. Um, as the longtime chair of the Tenure and Evaluation Committee. She also served as ABCFT treasurer and member of the negotiations team for many years. Many faculty have met her to quick wit, warm demeanor, and kindness to both faculty and students. When I first arrived at ABC during fall of 2014, her presentation on the tenure and evaluation process put me at ease. Throughout the next four years, she continued to provide helpful guidance as I worked through the tenure process. I'm grateful for her support and we will honor certainly. This is from Francis Malinoff. Um, I've been a general pediatrician in California for the last 41 years. I've also worked in New Zealand, Laos, Guatemala, and Tanzania. I'd like to make the following points on the subject of restarting in-person classes at ABC this fall semester. ABC should follow and enforce all evidence-based guidelines for assuring the safety of students, faculty, and staff exposure to COVID-19, including guidelines from the CDC, the American Academy of Pediatrics, and the California Department of Public Health. Health. Pseudoscience claims should be ignored and not encouraged by any ABC administration, faculty, or staff, including claims such as sipping warm water as prevention, expecting COVID to disappear with warm weather or like the flu, or expecting protection from becoming ill or having decreased symptoms with vitamin D supplements. Uh, I quote from President Knudsen's letter to all staff, please follow all the preventive measures we have distributed on multiple occasions. Most important among them, stay hydrated. Uh, sipping water will not prevent COVID-19. Making classrooms, labs, and lecture halls safe under the above guidelines must be realistically possible and enforced before students can return daily and weekly to these sites. Staff must be trained and monitored carefully to use disinfectants properly. Frequent and repeated use of necessary chemicals in a classroom setting may also pose a danger to asthmatics and students with other underlying health conditions. Dr. Sally Goza, president of the American Academy of Pediatrics, appeared at the White House Roundtable with the president and later told the morning edition David Green that local coronavirus infection rates and hotspots have to be taken into consideration to safely reopen schools. Previous guidance was criticized for saying little about the safety of educators and other school personnel. 
Friday statement co-signed by the two national teachers union and the AASA School Superintendents Association calls for putting educators as well as other stakeholders at the center of decision making. Emphasize that reopening safely will take more money. We call on Congress and the administration to provide the federal resources needed to ensure that inadequate funding does not stand in the way of safely educating and caring for students in our schools. Uh, this from Catalina Rios, I would like to ask you allow our ESL classes with field to continue because we need to learn the English language. We want to be able to go to college and pursue a professional career. Uh, from Rosa Villa, I would like to ask that ABC allow us to continue with our field ESL classes uh, to pursue a career. From Gladys Espinoza, I, I'm an active student in the ESL classes that field provides us I'm sorry, the font is so small, I can't read it. Uh, we need this for our daily lives and hope to continue receiving your assistance with our classes. Uh, and from uh, uh, Natividad Ortiz Sajun, we are learning, uh, I would like our ESL classes with field to continue because they help us in strengthening our confidence in communicating with others in our community. Uh, we are learning not to be afraid of speaking English. Tony Sobel, to represent the ABC student voice here today, we have an empty chair. The empty chair represents an egregious failure by the president and board of trustees of the Antelope Valley College. The reason why this chair is empty today is because the threatening, incendiary, and divisive leadership of the ABC president and board of trustees has made students to feel that they have a target on their backs if they speak publicly about the issues impacting their lives. Students are fearful of facing retaliation, retribution, and humiliation by the president for speaking out and advocating for equitable institutional policies and practices that uplift and improve the learning experience of underserved ABC students. The fear has been born from recent public spectacle created by Mr. Knutson, who eviscerated a fellow student who is simply attempting to call upon ABC leadership to seek to understand and serve as a powerful edifice for elevating real issues impacting ABC students ultimately revealing his identity and private information to the public, resulting in uh, death threats being leveled against him and his family. Is this the forward-thinking, inclusive college the president board of trustees envisions for their students? A threatening and disconnected environment where students feel terrified to call upon their own campus leadership for the critical support and emotional insurance they need to achieve academic success, fears that are especially heightened among students in the wake of the global turmoil caused by COVID-19. Regardless, this is the caustic college climate manufactured under the leadership of President Knudsen, who has demonstrated that he is not just corrosive to the institution of higher education, but that he represents a clear and present danger to the lives of students he has sworn to empower and protect. This abandonment of students of color by ABC leadership has been a long time ongoing struggle. For many years, students have felt a perceptible lack of support from the college administration, as if their voices are not adequately being heard. These sentiments are substantiated when we look at the dismal graduation rates at ABC, especially for students of color, where only about one in four Latinx and just one in 10 black AB students, ABC students will graduate with a degree. Not to mention over 60% of ABC students are living in poverty. Many are facing homelessness and fully one third of ABC students are suffering from food insecurity. Yet ABC students hear none of these issues critically discussed by the president or campus leadership. Students feel as if there is a dissonance between issues impacting students and the messaging coming from the office of the president. The fact that ABC's president is either disconnected from and or simply doesn't care about the issues affecting students has created feelings of anger, resentment, and invalidation among students. In more recent times, ABC students have been frustrated and outraged by the fact that President Knudsen has publicly expressed his contempt for the Black Lives Matter movement, a global movement aimed at ensuring that black lives are valued just as much as any other life, and that is overwhelmingly supported by the majority of ABC students. This outrage has been further fueled by the racist reorganization plan that has been proposed and championed by Mr. Knudsen to appoint a slate of nine all-white individuals to high-level leadership positions on campus. If ratified by the Board of Trustees, this overtly racist reorganization plan will have lasting impacts on perpetuating these white educational disparities among ABC students for generations to come. The students at ABC do not want to proceed down the same path that has produced this inequity and injustice. 
we are demanding sustainable and lasting change today. We want to place our community of Antelope Valley on the map for being a model of equity and inclusion for all members of this vibrant, beautiful, and diverse community in which we live. The students of ABC are calling upon the President and Board of Trustees to be champions for positive social change we want to see. If our voices are heard and the right decisions are made, this chair will no longer have to remain empty. Um, President Knudsen would like me to uh, announce that he is out ill this evening. I apologize, I should have announced that sooner. Um, I think I'm on item 11. Item 11 is our presentation of the reorganization of administrative structure. I've asked, um, we've asked Ms. Cook to give us an overview and then there'll be an opportunity for our invited guests to make comments. Ms. Cook. Thank you, Ann. Just a second to get Good evening, members of the Board of Trustees and the public. My name is Bridget Cook, and I'm the college's interim general counsel. And I'll give you a brief summary of the college proposed reorganization, as well as efforts to increase diversity, equity, and inclusion here at Animal Valley College. Just a little background about the college and its composition. Animal Valley College student body is made up of 79% students of color. College employees may, are made up with 85 full-time faculty, 33 or nearly 40% of the faculty members identify as minorities or people of color. The college employs 43 frontline, mid-level and executive managers or administrators, and of those, 14 or 32.5% identify as minorities. The 12-person executive council has two African Americans, one Asian Indian, one Hispanic, one position is presently vacant, and one is being recruited. There are six women and five men. Presently, the college is working to develop new a new technology platform, which will increase the recruiting efforts, um, including inclusive hiring practices. Here is a summary, and I apologize, I've touched something extra on the backwards. Here's a summary of programs uh, that are student focused on bridging the equity gap. We are one of few colleges auth authorized to convert a bachelor's degree. We have the Law Scholars Program 2 plus 2 plus 3, which is a pathway to becoming an attorney. We serve 200 incarcerated students. We have the AFAB program, which creates opportunities for employment in the aerospace industry. SOAR High School is located on our campus in conjunction with the Antelope Valley Union High School District with over 400 students. We have an on-campus child development center. We partner in Cal State University Bakersfield, has programs on our campus. And we have an articulated engineering program with Cal State University Long Beach. We have an on-campus food distribution program for students that happens twice a month. Health services are available on campus, including mental health services for our students. We offer computer and hotspot, a hotspot loan program to support our students um, during COVID and at other times. Recently, we were the recipients of the uh, $3.1 million CARES funding that went directly to students, and we have a 2.1 million fall distribution, 1.4 million of that went out to students this past weekend. 
We offer online tutoring and orientation, ongoing faculty training, free bus passes in partnership with ABTA and ABQMD. Our Measure AV has a $350 million capital bond, and there is lots of um, improvements and construction taking place on the campus. There's an express bus between Lancaster and Palmdale to serve our students. We also offer the Books, books Help Loan Program for students to assist in them purchasing um, textbooks for their courses. The proposed reorganization is authorized by board policy and administrative procedure 3100. And this designates the president as the person responsible for delineating the lines of responsibility and fixing the general duties of employees within the district. Right now, the president is currently moving from step six to step seven on a nine step program. Title V of the California Code of Regulations 53021C, 1 and 3, specify that the positions in a reorg do not constitute a vacancy when there is not a net increase in the number of employees for the district, or when an incumbent is upgraded, reclassified, or renamed without significantly altering the duties being performed by the individual. Here is a simple um, review of the proposed reorganization. There are revisions. This um, proposal is subject to revision based on the feedback received this evening and at other times by the president of the college. There are three interim positions, the general counsel, the vice president of administrative services, and the dean of CTE. Those are interim positions, and those individuals will have to compete for those positions in the future. The classification changes include executive directors for general services, financial and fiscal services, deans in athletics and kinesiology, health sciences and public safety, the Palm, and the Palmdale Center. The Office of Marketing and Public Information will have changes in administrative coordinator and the coordinator of communications. The executive director of ITS is presently not being filled. The college will face budget issues in the future, and the district will be okay for the 2021 year, however, with a 12% with reserve presently, and the 21-22 fiscal year won't be so promising. Presently, our share of deferrals is about $10 million. There's an opportunity to borrow $25 million but there won't be reimbursement of interest. The proposed reorganization will save $450,000 the first year and an estimated $350,000 each year thereafter without any job losses. The proposed reorganization, after a comprehensive review of the feedback, is scheduled for implementation on August 10th. Thank you. Uh, thanks, I'll open it up. Um, now, first for the board to ask any questions that you guys have for clarification from Bridget. I have no questions on that, but I think you did a terrific job. <laughs> I don't know how you, how you did as much as you did without keeling over, but great job. So, I have a question. Um, in Isn't there a position in business services that is also going to remain unfilled? We've got the executive director positions replacing the, um, the yes. current structure. I, I think I think that's also part of that. And I apologize, that was omitted from the um, the information that I printed on, on screen. The executive, no. um, the business officer, um, resigned um, this spring, and her position is not being backed up. Right. So that part of what is confusing about how does it save money is that these positions that are being unfilled. But and there's also a dean. That, and there's uh, also a dean that's being unfilled. And that really wasn't my question. Really, my question was between now and the time that the reorganization um, in whatever form it takes is implemented um, in the middle of August, uh, is there another committee meeting scheduled or another um, in, in that process? Where, where are we with that? 
So with regard to the process, we are, the process is a nine step process. We're actually on, on step seven of the process. Um, at this point, there, the feedback that has come in this evening mm -hmm. and previously, those things are all being considered. At this point, the president is responsible to review all of that information. There's not another committee um, meeting scheduled or indicated as part of the process going forward, but he does have to consider all the information that has been received to date, and then it goes back out for a week. So there's gonna be a one week period now where um, the campus um, can review as well. So this will be, the, the one week period will be after um, changes are made based on um, current feedback. Yes. Okay. Yes, correct. Perfect. Um, Bridget, I have a question also. In listening to the many comments, and uh, Dr. Herman, you did an excellent job. I, in my heart, I felt so bad for you reading them all, but I just did a great job. I am listening to the comments made by um, the many of them um, employees on campus and some students. Can you just give me a little bit more detail on what positions we are not opening for public, the, our, our employees here, or even inside or outside to apply for? So the, the reorg consists of moving current employees. There was no, um, they weren't flown outside or internally. It was moving people who were already in similar positions and adding duties to them and or lateral movements within the organization. So there, there was no uh, recruitment um, for these positions, but people had skills that matched the needs and um, their duties were increased. And those are the people who received um, pay increases. And then those that were moved laterally, they were moved into positions where there was a need demonstrated in another area. So in hearing you say that, I, I understand that, but we, it, I also understand that it sounds like we also are, don't really know if there are additional employees who may have had those same qualifications or more, who, who did not get an opportunity to apply for those positions. Is that, am I correct in that? That could be true. That I, could I be want true. to assume. Yeah, that could be true. That okay. could be true. Okay. Thank you. So I'll open it up um, for comment from our guests. Okay. From the Cedar Group. Um, who's going to go first, uh, Tony or Andreas? Yes, uh, good evening, Tony here. And I'm uh, sorry, Tony, before you start, your third speaker has not shown up. Uh, there was someone in the waiting room, Michelle A, but I've not seen your third visitor. Yes, um, what we're going to do at this point is, um, due to an unforeseen uh, situation with that uh, speaker, we are going to uh, read the statements that were prepared uh, for that student to say by our uh, student constituencies on campus. Very well. <laughs> total of, we, we've arranged a total of 10 minutes, so thank you. The floor is yours. Thank you. Good evening, ABC President, Board of Trustees, and Interim Campus Council. We thank you for the opportunity for Citizens for Equity, Diversity, and Applied Representation, CEDAR, to speak tonight on behalf of our campus and community constituents. We are here to voice our deep concern about your proposed campus reorganization plan and current campus climate. We come before you to amplify the ubiquitous outcry for equity, inclusion, and representation in all things Antelope Valley College. We are also here to remind you that Antelope Valley College, as the only public community college in our valley, is ours and not yours alone to do with as you please. We call out, first of all, the lies and manipulation of us all. You lied to us about campus community buy-in for your reorganization plan, when in actuality, no constituency group supports your reorganization plan. Many of us have already delivered statements to make you 
well aware of this fact. You manipulated the facts about the tone and takeaway of Cedar's meeting with you and your leadership team on Wednesday, July 1st, 2020. You immediately began to spread a false narrative to our campus community that Cedar was left blown away by all the great things going on at our campus as the general takeaway from our meeting. When in fact, these statements were made at the very end of our meeting and by a community guest you invited. These were not the sentiments of Cedar, nor any of the campus and community constituents we represent. You lied to us about your professed commitment to diversity at our June 8th, 2020 Board of Trustees meeting when it was stated that, quote, the district is committed to hiring and staffing and, and staff development processes that support the goals of equal opportunity, diversity, and inclusion, and provide equal consideration for all qualified candidates, unquote. Your proposed campus reorganization plan and process are the very antithesis of these ideals. You lied to the press when you manipulated AVC demographics by padding your diversity numbers to include temporary interim campus leadership appointments, such as our very own Black Campus Council and other gross inaccuracies. So we reiterate our demands. We demand a college that welcomes and advocates for the education, advancement, enlightenment of all students, students, staff, faculty, and community members. We demand a college leadership, faculty, and staff that reflect, reflects the, reflects and represents the rich diversity of the Antelope Valley College student body that is overwhelmingly black and brown. We demand a college that embraces and upholds the standards of fair, equitable, inclusive, competitive, and open, open hiring, reclassification, and promotion methods and practices. Not an abusive and narrowly focused application of your locally drafted and self-empowering AP and AB 3100 organization structure policy. We demand a college that includes all constituent groups, including students, staff, faculty, and community members on all campus leadership hiring committees, where our aim is to ensure equity, fairness, and that we hire only the best for everyone concerned. This is a common practice and is used by many public institutions and municipalities to ensure fair and equitable hiring. We demand that this hiring committee practice be adopted today by AVC. We demand a college that does, doesn't pay lip service to the practice of diversity equity, inclusion, and fair play. You undermine these ideals and practices when on one hand, you officially declare your commitment to diversity and claim to be allowing AO and BP 3100 policy to claim to be following AO and BP 3100 policy as written. When on the other hand, you intend to unilaterally apply this policy in a tone deaf and counterproductive manner by not by openly searching for and hiring top candidates, but by appointing nine all white top administrators instead, despite campus and community wide cries of opposition. Even the employees you have named in the reorganization plan stand in solidarity with the rest of the campus constituency groups also demanding a fair and equitable hiring process and not unilateral appointments. Also, there is no emergency circumstance that requires you to make such rushed appointments to our college leadership, especially when there are far better and fair common hiring practices, practice ways to do this. These rushed leadership appointments stand to not only impact our current students, but generations of students to come long after you as president are likely retired and your current board of trustees have completed their service. 
President Knudsen, our college and community is clearly and resoundingly saying that you, sir, are getting this entire thing all wrong. And in closing, we also want to state that CEDAR is concerned that many of the voices of the public comments regarding this issue have already gone unheard tonight due to lack of time. We encourage everyone listening to go to our Facebook page and post your comments on our wall. You can find us on Facebook by searching at Cedar Advocates. Thank you. And now we'll hear from one of our esteemed community members. Andres? Thank you. Uh, We're down to three minutes. Mr. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Tony. Uh, good evening, Board President, uh, members of the board, uh, and community members. I first want to thank you for the opportunity to comment. My name is Andres Chavez, and I'm a member of CEDAR by way of the Cesar Chavez Foundation. Uh, I didn't attend Antelope Valley College. I do have ties to the clinic. I attended my uh, public school education, K through 12, in Tehachapi, uh, about 45 minutes from campus. After high school, many of my friends, and including some of my family, uh, attended ABC, uh, including my cousin, who was a standout softball player there. And her time at ABC um, afforded her a full ride scholarship to CSU Monterey Bay. Like others uh, before me and like Tony said, we're here to comment on President Knudsen's proposed reorganization. Uh, tonight, I simply ask that President Knudsen and the trustees pause the proposed campus reorganization, including its associated appointment of, of nine all white individuals to top level administration positions that do not reflect the student population or the Antelope Valley community. When Cedar met with President Knudsen and others on July 1st, he highlighted some of the successes for students of color at ABC and asked us to recognize ABC's commitment to them. In calling for our, patient, in calling for our patients, President Knudsen repeatedly said, institutions do not change overnight. Yet in contrast to uh, President Knudsen's request for our patients, this proposed reorganization is being undertaken in haste. We acknowledge the progress that's been made as we saw uh, in the general counsel's presentation. Um, however, this is, uh, this is a little different. Um, we're now asking you guys to do more, to create a greater good, and to do better for all of our students. We ask you guys to pause, to be more deliberate in your decision-making and to create a greater good, to do better for all of our students. We ask that, um, we ask for a new process that includes comprehensive recruitment efforts that specifically seek out diverse candidates uh, for each position, and that will ultimately hire more diverse, competent, and qualified administrators. I thank you for your time this evening. We thank you for your consideration. Thank you very much. Uh, just by uh, way of clarification, uh, every comment that we received by the six o'clock deadline is read. That was, I, we didn't leave anybody out. Anybody whose comment didn't make it into the stack, must have been after that six o'clock deadline. Um, and we apologize for that, but we do need a little bit of time to get those things ready. Madam President, can I make one comment? Absolutely, that, please do. Um, it, it's um, been brought to my attention that there are four comments that were on the YouTube um, feed regarding um, a particular individual not having their the entirety of their comments read. And um, I'm sure um, Madam President would agree with Board Policy 2355 with regard to decorum, um, remarks or discussions that are something that you would have in closed session or be discussing about an individual employee are considered out of order, which gave you the discretion to not say, use the language and say the words, et cetera, um, regarding an individual employee. And so, right, my, my concern was the confidentiality of an individual, an individual employee. Uh, but to that point, uh, with respect to that particular comment, I am asking staff to follow up directly, yes. um, not only with the person who submitted the comments, but to follow up on the situation and uh, to report back and let us know what actions were taken. Uh, with respect to all of the comments, and they were voluminous, um, I appreciate the willingness of the community to uh, come forward and, and speak their piece. Uh, it's hard to read all of that, um, and it's sometimes difficult to hear 
uh, things being relayed that seem to me sometimes to be perhaps a misunderstanding of fact or uh, a misstatement or I don't know, miscommunication. I hope it's those things. I hope it's not um, ill will or mean spirited. I think we all want the same thing. I know that we want to be inclusive. I know that we want to support equity. I know that we care about this community. We all do. Um, I appreciate you being willing to speak to the problems and we're asking for follow-up on the specific issues that we can follow up on. As far as the reorganization goes, no action will be taken prior to the next board meeting at the very least. So uh, you will be seeing follow-up on that issue. Um, I don't think I have anything else to add, but again, thank you for those considerations. Anything else, this um, No, Madam President. For the board, any other comments concerning the presentation? No. So we will move on to item 12, employee recognition, and she volunteered, so I have asked Mrs. Gaines to read the resolution um, in uh, recognition of uh, Antelope Valley College retirees. Thank you, Dr. Herman. Certificate of Resolution. Whereas the Antelope Valley Community College District fulfills its mission to the community through the strength of its employees and whereas Antelope Valley College has thrived throughout its 90 year history because of the talent, skill, professionalism, and compassion of its faculty and staff. And whereas Antelope Valley College is recognized as a leader and innovator on state, regional, and national platforms and whereas Amlet Valley College enjoys the loyalty and dedication of its employees serving students and the community, and whereas Amlet Valley College has been well served by the following individuals. Bertha Acosta Del Riego, 2007 to 2020. Melissa Arnett, 1977 to 2020. Bill Bailey, 2007 to 2020. Nancy Bednar, 2008 to 2019. Carolyn Burrell, 2001 to 2020. Magdalena Caprio, 1998 to 2019. Marvin Cummins, 2004 to 2020. Vivian Davenport, 1998 to 2020. James Jackson, 2017 to 2019. Dennis Calamayan, 2000 to 2020. Stephen Langyard, 1972 to 2020. Victor Laxamana, 2010 to 2020. Robin Mackey, 2016 to 2020. Gloria Mills, 2007 to 2020. Tina Pullman, 1996 to 2020. Melissa Romero, 2000 to 2019. Linda Rose, 1999 to 2019. Timothy Ross, 1992 to 2019. Ronald Shreves, 1990 to 2020. Mary Rose Toll, 2007 to 2019. Gary Wheeler, 2014 to 2019. Sharon Wilson, 2003 to 2019. Callion York, 1984 to 2020. Representing collectively 453 years of unselfish dedication. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Antelope Valley College Board of Trustees that each of the aforementioned is recognized and congratulated for their outstanding service and further be it resolved that each of the aforementioned is thanked for their service and with its deepest gratitude, the Board of Trustees wishes them every happiness and their respective retirements. Adopted this 13th day of July, 2020. Dr. Laura Herman, board president. Mr. Michael Adams, board clerk. 
And on that note, uh, let's uh, take action to adopt the resolution. Can I have a motion? I'll sit. I'm not moving. Second. <laughs> I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Advice. Did we lose her? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes, and now I propose that we give our retirees a big hand. Yeah. Uh, item 13, report of closed session action. We have no report. Item 14 is the consent agenda. Um, I'm going to ask for a motion to pr approve the consent agenda with the removal of item 14.3, which we will vote on separately. May I have a motion? So move. Second. Advice? Approve. Sorry, I had my device kicked me out, so I had to come back in on something else. Sorry. Totally understand. It's okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, we have approval of the consent agenda. Now I'd like to return to item 14.3. On pages one and two of that item, there was a persistent typographical error uh, where the, the date, the ending effective date was listed as 6-30-2020, but it was intended to be 6-30-2021. So I'd like, to have, uh, I'd like to entertain a motion to approve the personnel schedule with that correction. So move. Second. Discussion? Advice? Approve. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, motion passes. 15.1, approval of resolution number 20-21 slash one, declaring the futility of public bidding for 3D metal printer system. So move. Second. Any discussion? Advice? Agree. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, motion passes. 15.2, approval of resolution number 20-21 slash two of the Board of Trustees regarding compensation for absence, member of the Board of Trustees. Second. With one abstention, with one abstention, is there any discussion? Advice? Uh, can I ask what the reason for the abstention is? Uh, because it concerns his absence, so he can't vote on it. Oh, okay. Uh, agree. Okay. All Thanks. in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And we have one abstention. 15.2 passes. 15.3, approval to extend the use of Mitel Network's uh, cooperative agreement through May 31st, 2021. Okay. Second. Any discussion? Advice? Agree. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. 15-4. Approval of cash net contract extension from July 1st, 2020 to October 1st, 2020. So moved. Second. Discussion? Advice? Approve. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. 15-5. Approval of the amendment for a one-year extension of the Calisters third-party administrators consulting services contract. I'll move. Okay. Second. Any discussion? Advice? Approve. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. 15.6, approval of amendment number three to extend the term of the California State Teachers Retirement System, AKA CalSTRS, consultant services agreement between TCG administrators and Enloe Valley College through December 31st, 2021. Move approval. Second. Any discussion? Advice? Approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes, 15-7, approval to award contract for copier maintenance services. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Advice? Approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 15.8, approval to award Cypress Rich Risk Management contract for student athlete accident insurance coverage. Move approval. Second. 
Any discussion? Advice? Approve. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? 15.9, approval to utilize national IPA cooperative piggyback contract R170501 with Annexter Incorporated for Security System Services through June 30th, 2021. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Advice? Approve. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? 15.10, approval to utilize national IPA cooperative piggyback contract number R161701 with Annex Sturt Incorporated for cabling and networking products and solutions through March 31st, 2021. So moved. Second. Discussion? Advice? Approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 15.11, approval of the affiliation agreement between Antelope Valley College and Antelope Valley Lung and Sleep Institute from July 1st, 2020 through June 30th, 2021. So moved. Second. Discussion? Advice? Agree. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, 15.12, approval of school affiliation agreement between Antelope Valley College and High Desert Medical Group from July 1st, 2020 through June 30th, 2021. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Advice? Agree. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 15.13, approval of school affiliation agreement between Anlo Valley Community College and Ridgecrest Regional Hospital from July 1st, 2020 through June 30th, 2021. I'll move. Second. Discussion? Advice? Agree. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 1514, approval to purchase computer and lecture desk from Computer Comforts Incorporated with cooperative piggyback agreement through CMAS contract number 4-13-71-0110B with CARES Act funds. So moved. Second. Discussion. Advice? Agree. All in favor? Aye. 15.15, approval to purchase audiovisual equipment for classrooms from Howard Technology Solutions with cooperative piggyback agreement through NCPA contract 01-45 with CARES Act funds. So move. Second. Discussion? Advice? Agree. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, 1516, approval of research plan with Apotheo LLC concerning academic and agronomic data collection research with industrial hemp. I'll move. Second. Discussion? Advice? Agree. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? 1517, approval to award bid ABC 2019-2020-25, Foxfield Hanger Improvements. So moved. Second. Discussion? Advice? Approve. All in favor? Aye. 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 1518, approval to award bid ABC 2020-2021-1, Palmdale Center Technology Facility. So moved. Second. Discussion? Advice? Approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 1519, approval of project assignment amendment to Kruger Benson Zemer Architects Incorporated for Architectural Services Gymnasium Renovation Project. So moved. Second. Discussion? Advice? Approve. All in favor? Aye. 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 1520, approval of project assignment amendment to Lundgren Management for Construction Management Services, Gymnasium Renovation Project. So moved. Second. Discussion? Advice? Approve. All in favor? Aye. 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 
1521, approval of project assignment amendment with North State Environmental. Second. Discussion? Advice? Approved. All in favor? Aye. 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 1522, approval of change orders for Discovery Lab Project 17-039. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Advice? Approved. All in favor? Aye. 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 1523, approval of change order for APL flooring replacement project. So Second. Discussion? Advice? Approved. All in favor? Aye. 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 1524, approval of change order for campus infrastructure and PV relocation project. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Advice? Approved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 1525, approval of change order for Palmdale Center phase one project. I'll move. Second. Any discussion? Advice? Agree. All in favor? Aye. 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 1526, approval to file notice of completion and resolution of acceptance on the Fox Field Improvement Project. I'll move. Second. Any discussion? Advice? Agree. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 1527, approval to file notice of completion and resolution of acceptance on the Palmdale Center Technology Facility Project, phase one. So moved. Second. Discussion? Advice? Approved. All in favor? Aye. 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 1528, approval to file notice of completion and resolution of acceptance on the Office of Business Services and Risk Management Office Modernizations Project. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Advice? Approved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Items 1529 through 1536 all apply to Measure AV funds. I propose that we uh, block those and vote on them in a single motion. If that's agreeable to the board, I would accept a motion for that effect. I'll vote. Second. Any discussion of items 15.29 through 15.36? Advice? Approved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Item 16, um, information items. We received another monthly facilities report and uh, construction's moving along nicely. So take a look at that. And the reports are listed, the reports and announcements are listed as per normal, the end of the agenda. Of course, in this alternative environment, we ask for those reports in writing. And these are in, I apologize, no particular order. So I'll just start at the top. Um, I have from Dr. Aurora Bird, that's the ABCFT president. Antelope Valley College Federation of Teachers has noted that chaos on campus, including actual protests at the edge of campus, primarily caused by the actions of the ABC administration. I'm saddened by this, but also furious because in these difficult times, I'd hoped that the ABC administration would show strong compassionate leadership focused on safety and respect for employees and students. Instead, tonight I must focus on three key issues. First, President Knuth's public response to a private student email is not only absolutely unacceptable, it's shameful. It is our understanding that the President's actions has resulted in threats of violence to the students, up to and including death threats. The student is now to contact law enforcement through the threats he is receiving as a direct result of the President's choice to forward a private student email to over 10,000 people. It's our opinion that the president's action is a FERPA violation, an ethics violation, and a violation of our college mission statement. The president's own statement on our college website includes, Antelope Valley College is a very special place that prides itself on professionalism and expertise of its administration, faculty, and staff. Every employee of the college is dedicated to your success as a student at the college. The president was apparently not thinking of this statement when he decided to forward the private email. 
Whether or not we agree with the student's choice of words, he did not deserve the president's unwarranted attack to have the contents of his private communication and his identity revealed to every single employee and student at ABC. The president's callous disregard for student privacy and safety is abhorrent and the exact opposite of the expected behavior of a college employee. As representatives of the college, President Knudsen's behavior reflects on all of us. We want to tell our students and the wider community that this is not how we as educators treat students. Second, safety for all students, faculty, and staff on campus continues to be of utmost importance to us, especially in light of the current campus closure due to the recent presence on campus of three COVID-19 positive employees. I'm horrified that an in-person retirement celebration was held on the very day that the campus community was notified of these exposures. The ABC administration has made it possible for most summer classes and many fall classes to be held remotely. However, the ABC administration is only reluctantly committed to nightly cleaning of in-use classrooms and continues to insist that students will have to clean their own workstations so the room can be ready for the next class. Even as case counts rise in LA County, the ABC administration seems reluctant to commit to safety precautions recommended by many different national different national, state, and local governments and other organizations, including recurring on-campus testing, temperature screening, and rigorous enforcement of mask wearing. It's clear to me that the ABC administration's response is cavalier, woefully insufficient, does not appear to be evidence-based. Third, President Knudsen continues to try to rush through his proposed reorganization. The Federation opposes this reorganization because, while meaning no disrespect to the employees singled out for promotion, we're deeply concerned that not a single person of color is among the employees set to be promoted and receive a pay increase. We also oppose it because it does not appear to be fiscally responsible. According to President Knudsen, the budget news for the next two years isn't good. In these times, the college needs to be responsible, transparent, fiscal leadership. Finally, we oppose the reorganization because the president has barely paid lip service to the ABC Board of Trustee approved policies and procedures. We stand in solidarity with the Classified Union, the Associated Students Organization, CMS, the Academic Senate, and the community members in opposition to this misguided reorganization. In this moment when we need strong leadership, President Knutson offers the opposite. He's gone out of his way to attack members of our community while treating others as completely inconsequential. Overall, the ABC administration continues to be tongue deaf to the current events related to the coronavirus pandemic, centuries of nationwide systemic racism, and local tragedies, including the recent hanging death of former ABC student Robert Fuller. Our school and community deserve better than the current hostile environment at ABC. The faculty stand ready to fight for our students and community. From uh, Van Ryder, Academic Senate President. To begin with, I would like to recognize and express gratitude for the incredible effort and dedication of the faculty and staff in providing instruction and critical support to students during this unprecedented time in the history of our college and community. Our students have benefited from the innovative and thoughtful online resources that have been created and continue to be developed, especially important in this state of increased online instruction and student support. However, there's so much to be done. We need a more proactive approach and improved timely online communication in regards to fall semester that will better prepare our first time in returning students. Additionally, while the college has continued to gather data and guidelines on safety protocols in preparation for fall and has had to react to changing circumstances, some individuals have expressed that they would feel safer with a published safety plan and improved communication that outlines the safety protocols and expectations for staff and students being developed in preparation for fall semester. In conjunction with the agenda item 11-1, faculty members are also concerned the proposed administrative reorganization overlooks the importance of equity policies for employment at a public institution. Proposed action limits access and opportunity to other CMS and classified employees who may have wanted to apply. Senate has previously communicated other budget timing and procedural concerns regarding the implementation of the reorganization to the College Coordinating Committee. Finally, in this environment of increased social awareness and need for racial equality and equity, the Academic Senate calls for greater action from the Board of Trustees and College leadership in fostering dialogue, engagement, and action within the college and to lead ABC's commitment to social, gender, and racial equity. I recognize and applaud the incredible efforts in these areas by our own student equity program and dedicated faculty and staff, and realize that our ABC community can more widely support and strengthen their efforts. How can student equity become more than just a program or department on our campus? How can it become part of who we are at ABC? Our own institutional learning outcome, community and global consciousness, states that our institution will understand and apply personal concepts of integrity, ethics, self-esteem, lifelong learning, while contributing to the well-being of society and the environment. 
demonstrate an awareness and respect of the values of diversity, complexity, aesthetics, and varied cultural expressions. Our collective voice, message, and mission should be one that affirms the sanctity of life and our college's commitment to inclusion, diversity, and equity. Our voice should denounce racism or violence in any form. Our words should be those of support, healing, learning, understanding, and unity. And then our words should lead to action. Um, I think I read the statement, but I'll read it again. Um, in memory, uh, I wanted to express on behalf of the classified bargaining unit, we are deeply saddened by the loss of Lyette Bowler. Although we did not know her well, we worked with her on negotiations and she was very committed to getting the best settlement possible and many worked with her in her department. Um, Lyette was very committed. When she felt something should go in a specific direction, she was unwavering in her diligence to support that position to get that in. Her service to students, classified and faculty she worked with, campus community and the union will be lasting and long remembered. We send our heartfelt condolences to her family, the faculty, and all who knew her. May the depth of her loss be eased in time by the height of the memories she leaves behind um, in memory from her classified bargaining unit members. From Jared Simmons, uh, newly elected board members, Michelle Williams, secretary, Crystal Ellis, confidential representative, James Yoakum, supervisor representative, and Greg Borman, dean and educational manager and administrator. And from our ASO president, Cameron Zapata. Good evening, we're continuing to add new members and have chosen some new goals for the year, including increasing advocacy and support for equity gap populations, increasing student involvement, reducing waste on campus, and to support students through the remote learning environment. Additionally, we want to support our international students by standing with the chancellor's office when it comes to um, ICE and students being forced to take in-person classes. We also want to support the creation and continuation of important dialogues involving racism and equality, specifically with how it continues to affect our students on a personal and institutional level. Finally, in regards to the administrative reorganization, ASO is asking for an equitable hiring process which aligns with our EEO plan and commitment to diversity on campus, and that the concerns of all constituency groups are properly addressed, regardless of the changes shown uh, during tonight's presentation. And let's uh, go to board member comments, and we will start with our student trustee. Okay. Um, I'm I had, I just wanted to um, say that I, I totally agree with, with the comments made in the beginning from the public um, about upholding diversity. And I just wanted to add that I think that one way, one good way we could do that would be to add a Black Lives Matter banner to the homepage. I know a lot of other community colleges have done that and I think that it would be great for ABC to show its support in that way. Oh. Perfect. Thank you. Mr. Stoltz? Nothing for me. I'm gassed. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Adams on the phone. Anything you need to Nothing tonight. Thank you. Mr. Buffalo? Not one thing. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Gates? Um, I do have something. I first want to say thank you to everyone. <laughs> Who submitted comments this evening. I think it's uh, important that um, the board always, um, you know, gets to hear uh, the concerns of our, of our um, educational community here at ABC. And then I also want to say congratulations to all of the retirees, 453 hours, uh, I mean years, not hours, uh, 453 years total is um, is a lot of time that they've dedicated to this to this college, and I just want to say thank you so much for their service. Thank you. Well, with that being said, nothing else from me. We will adjourn this meeting at eight forty. Oh. You were saying eight thirty. No, I said 8.40. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good job. Good night, everyone. Good night. I say thank you to the interpreters. Y'all did a great job.
Yeah, you guys hung in there. Well done. <laughs> they just switch off right on, right on the money.